everyone. I am James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town, a special one, I have to say, because um, like we're doing a lot these days, unfortunately, we've got to say farewell to somebody who has been a regular uh, kind of visitor to uh, Talk of the Town and to ACMI in general, and with whom we've collaborated a ton. I am here in the community room at our beloved Robbins Library with our beloved library director, Andrea Nikolai. Um, as I said uh, at the outset, unfortunately, for the last time that we get to talk to Andrea in this capacity. Um, she is, after a good long stretch at the helm here, uh, going to be moving on, and we'll talk about that a, you know, a little bit later in our conversation. But basically, I wanted to take this opportunity to look back over the years with Andrea that she's been here and lots and lots of changes, new programs, innovative kind of responses to things that have happened. One, one or two things you all may be familiar with. But anyway, let me first thank you as always for being here. We really do appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, James. So tell us about, you know, as you first came in to Arlington, um, it was as assistant library director. I remember that well. Mm -hmm. um, what did you know of Arlington at that point? Yeah, so in the summer of 2012, I knew that I wanted to leave New York City for a new opportunity. And I actually knew Arlington already because I have friends who grew up here. Mm. So friends from my college era who grew up here and, uh, and had fond memories of Arlington from right? growing up. Oh, yeah. So a few, actually one of my dearest friends um, grew up right here in Arlington and was a big baseball star <laughs> during his day. Anyway, um, I, I heard a lot of stories about Arlington before I actually ever considered moving here and working for the town. So um, had a very favorable impression. And then um, when the assistant director job opportunity became available, just looking at the website, at the community, um, talking to some folks who live in the area, I was really enticed, and it was it was an easy decision to apply. Hmm. And with connections in the area, very easy decision to accept the position when it was offered. And Ryan Livergood was the the director at the time, and and he was just terrific, such a positive force, and a great mentor to me. So I was really lucky to have that experience as assistant director. So. You, you, you had friends who had grown up in Arlington, and of course, then you did this investigating that you're talking about. But, like, what what specifically stood out for you about Arlington compared to I don't know, just a, a number of other places mm -hmm. um, that that had you excited about coming in? Well, I think it felt familiar in a way. It it um, you know, a much bigger town than the town where I grew up in in Haddonfield, New Jersey, um, <laughs> which is a town of twelve thousand. Arlington is obviously a much bigger town, but similar, similar um, characteristics. I mean, a lot of Victorian homes, colonial homes. It really seemed familiar and comfortable to me. With and, and Arlington has such rich, rich history, and that all kind of, you know, appealed to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. In addition, I think the the disposition of of the the air the region. I mean, there's so many schools here. Boston is such an exciting city. So it was really, you know. It seemed like a combination of wonderful worlds to me. Mm -hmm. And when I started meeting the people who live here and who work for the library and who support the library, I mean, it was just, it, it really all came together for a, a fantastic experience. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm getting a little bit beyond your question now. No, 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 that's fine. But, uh, and, 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 you know, Ryan, I also r remember Ryan well as just a very, uh, he, he was very kind of embracing and expansive person. He really just did a good job of uh, continuing to make this place, Robbins and of course the Fox Library as well, the community centers, really the beating hearts in some ways of this community that they continue to be and that you expanded upon, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, Ryan was a, a great mentor, really fun loving guy. I, I will never forget in this very community room during the first Arlington Book Festival, which I, I ran as assistant director, um, Steve Almond had written, just written a book about football. Mm -hmm. And Ryan dressed up in an old timey football costume 
for that program. And, and I mean, he Ryan just, did have a line, like he, he does probably still. I haven't seen him in a while, but he had a, a football kind of, <laughs> you know, lineman's just, you know, he was much, he was, he was very affable. He is very affable and friendly and all mm -hmm. that stuff, but he was, you know, he, he could, he could wear a uniform like that. <laughs> I'm sure he'd appreciate that impression. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. He was a great guy is continues to be a great guy. We're still in touch. Yeah. Um, and he's executive director of the Gurney, Illinois public library system. So, um, anyway, I still stay in touch with Ryan, but I had such a great time working with him and for him and in support of all kinds of exciting initiatives, um, for the library. And he was the one who, for example, um, started the idea of having something to support the maker community in town. At first, that was conceived as a makerspace, which so many libraries were doing at the time, but then it morphed into our current li our library of things. And he was also the one who recognized the potential in the Beehive, uh, mm -hmm. the nonprofit that ran the Beehives for the region, and um, helped get that underway. And we now we still have Beehives on the third floor balcony because of Ryan Livergood starting that uh, that program. And so. the popular addition they have been right from the beginning. <laughs> Absolutely. That's for sure. Um, so what, I mean, obviously when Ryan left, you assumed the directorship. So briefly, like what, what are, how, how much do the duties change? What, in what way is the, you know, moving from assistant to directing, um, you know, what are the things that you're taking on there, mm -hmm. um, that are new? Yeah, I, I th well, what I had to learn as a new library director was how important it was and is to maintain and nurture relationships with people who support the library, whether they be residents in town, our support groups. At the time that I um, became director in 2015, the Arlington Library's foundation was still getting off the ground mm -hmm. as an organization. And part of my job, uh, an important part of my job as, an, as a young director, became um, supporting the foundation in its growth. Right. And um, that meant you know, contributing toward, contributing written materials for the annual appeal and all kinds of um, support for the, the board itself, um, communication and, you know, collecting the mail, et cetera. Um, and, and, and just making sure that, that I was being a good steward of the funds that were donated to the foundation for the library. Um, so that was, and that's been one of the greatest pleasures of my role as director, seeing that group grow and change and develop into the foundation that it is today. And now it's raising, well over $100,000 a year, and that's tremendous. Um, I've also seen the Friends Group. I mean, the Friends Group is another group that I have close relationship with as a director, and the assistant director also helps in, in liaising with the Friends Group mm -hmm. and um, helping them with their initiatives and making sure that they have the space they need and that the book sales go off without a hitch. And um, they've also been just such a pleasurable um, group to work with. and so motivated and so positive. Um, so yeah, th you know, those are. I want to jump in on the, uh, uh, you know, I, you, you might think I would want to jump in on the Friends side because, you know, I was lucky enough to be a, a board member on the Friends for a little while as well. Um, but actually I wanted to talk about just, just, just kind of highlight or acknowledge that the work that you just described that you did in helping the foundation to get off the ground and, and, and reach the point that it is now, that's such important seed work for that your successor is going to be able to enjoy the fruits of. Because like you said, you need to provide a lot of stuff just for them to do their thing in terms of, again, getting things rolling to the point where they are now. Very established, as you said, pulling in good amount of money each year. Very nice. Yeah. Um, that was starting from zero, really. Right. And and Arlington, I will say, has a long tradition of philanthropy towards the library. So it's, <laughs> it, I mean, starting with the very beginning, I mean, look at the name of this building. Uh, the Robbins Library was established with funds given by Maria Robbins in memory of her husband, Eli. And it there is this strong tradition of not only philanthropy toward the library, but also municipal support of our our hours, our materials, and all of the all of the things that we need to help us run smoothly. Um, I really uh, have to acknowledge the town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, for all of his support over the years. Um, he's helped me and the trustees add positions to the library that have greatly enhanced our services. Um, 
we have also been able to add hours to the library. Mm -hmm. So through the town's support, we shifted funding for Sundays from private fund sources to the municipal budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's very appropriate, wonderful for the community, um, an important service. And, and I'm really pleased to say, and I know this is getting into a little bit of of, uh, of the future, but mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be able to announce that the library will be open for the first time in its history from nine to five on Saturdays in July and August. Wow. So yeah, we will be. Yeah, that's been that's been a, a kind of a dead time for, for weekends. And, well, in the right past, in it the perhaps past. was. Yeah, and exactly. there, there was this sense, I think for a long, long time that Arlington emptied out in the summertime and that people mm -hmm. went to the Cape or what have you. And that is, you know, our world has changed dramatically mm -hmm. since those times. And we have a lot of, you know, we have tons of people who take advantage of our summer Saturday hours, which had been nine to noon on, on Saturdays in July and August. They were among our most popular hours of the whole year. So mm -hmm. we knew, we knew that once we expanded those hours, they would be a hit. And I have absolutely no doubt that they're going to be really popular. Um, we're an important place to cool off as well right. as there are climate changes. And the library is taking on all sorts of interesting new roles in the face of climate change. I think the cooling center is one example of that. So, Right. Uh, uh, you know, so let's just say the, uh, the library has taken on all kinds of new roles under, again, your, your stewardship here because, um, you know, the pandemic is the big thing, of course, and we will talk about that. But in general, there, there has been a kind of constant and organic growth in the services that you provide and in, the, in that in response to what you can tell the community is looking for. As you just said, expanded hours on Saturday is something that if you open it, they will come, right? Um, and you're you can be pretty sure about that. But that means that you're paying attention mm -hmm. to what it is, what seems important or what are priorities for the community in terms of what the library can provide. Yeah. Um, I think you've done that in other ways. T tell us about some of the things that have, uh, you know, that have basically come to life, um, you know, while during your years here. Yeah, sure. So um, one thing I'm, I'm really proud of um, that started actually as an outcome of that um, Arlington Book Festival I mentioned earlier, um, we realized that there were so many authors in town and so many authors in this region who were interested in a platform, you know, to share their creativity and, and, um, and meet each other. And so the Arlington Author Salon was a program series that developed out of the book festival. I was lucky enough to um, meet Anjali Mitterduva and Whitney Scherer, who are two local authors who then became primary organizers and volunteer organizers of this salon that we've been so happy to support mm -hmm. over the years. Um, we've received grants from the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, another organization that deserves a major shout out for the development and growth that they've seen and that they've, they've made happen over the last five years and more. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the Arlington Author Salon was a, a grant funded program through the ACAC and and we've hosted over 80 authors um, as a result of this That's series. That's fantastic. And, and we man. get great turnouts. People love love that series. We have a loyal following. And during COVID, of course, we had to go virtual with that series. But now we're returning to the Kickstand Cafe. Sadly, I will be leaving before the July 14th Author Salon, but <laughs> it's returning to Kickstand, and we're so happy about that. Um, we also have a succession plan in place for the Author Salon. So... There will, that will continue. Another initiative that I'm particularly proud of um, is, let's see, the Historical Arlington Newspapers. I have to get that name right every time because we, we went back and forth. Historic, historical, <laughs> we landed on historical. Mm -hmm. So the Historical Arlington Newspapers, of course, is the digitized um, advocate and the other local papers that existed even before the advocate. And we did spend some time, I know you and I and Richard Duffy talking about that initiative um, on a previous occasion, but it's one of those one of those projects that's going to have such a long and fruitful <laughs> life for the mm -hmm. town. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, just opening up the the annals of history, as they say, to um, to help connect people with this in, important resource of of town history. So, um, yeah, it's, it's that, never going to not be relevant. It's never exactly. You know, well it's said. it's always 
yeah, there will always be a reason to, mm -hmm. for people to turn to it. So I think, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and it was very palpable in talking to you and Richard uh, on, on that occasion, which was the first episode of Check It Out, the, new, mm -hmm. the, the series that we hope to continue as well, of course, um, with the library. But it was very palpable, your excitement as well as his, mm -hmm. about being able to offer this to the community. You yeah. realize just just what kind of a resource that is. Oh yeah, and and we have, uh, well, he's not so new anymore, but we have a local history librarian who's really taking that on and invested in promoting it. His name's Stephen Prochet, and he's been great about, you know, supporting genealogical research and local history research for, the, for anybody who's interested in Arlington, and we're so happy to have him on board. Mm -hmm. um, the other project that I wanted to call out um, that happened during my tenure is the Reimagining Our Libraries project. So. Back in 2017, we hired, the trustees funded um, a building study for Robbins and Fox to look at the physical spaces, what the community would like to see in the future of the physical spaces. And at that time, we developed two building plans for Robbins and for Fox, um, very ambitious building plans that um, we have since had to re-examine as mm. a result of some seriously changed finances for the town as you're well aware so mm -hmm. we're but we're we're still keeping our eyes on the prize of changes to our physical spaces that make sense for the community that help the library serve better um, among those changes is a shift and an um, increased amount of space for teens in the library mm -hmm. we've seen with the population growth um, the, the enrollment growth in town uh, our teen space is just not big enough for all the teens who want to be there so the idea is to shift that teen space from where it is now on the mass outside of the building on the first floor into the fiction room mm. and shift the fiction collection over to where the teen where, space is, uh -huh. kind of a swap. Mm -hmm. But we're also hoping to unite the hardcover and paperback collections of fiction, which have always been separate. And yeah, that, weird. yeah, that's one of the few things I have to say that <laughs> just have never made sense to me about this yeah. place. Yeah, uh, we, we want to correct Maybe the that. only thing, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> So yeah, increasing the teen space would be wonderful, and that's something that um, you know I hope that the residents of the town will support in in future years and see the the value of it. Um, and in addition to that, increasing our meeting room spaces. So we want to add a couple of smaller meeting rooms on the third floor. We want to renovate the bathrooms on the first floor, which <laughs> are not in great shape mm -hmm. as anyone who has used and them they knows. are very well used and not in very good <laughs> yeah. shape right so yes both of those things are true um in order to really be up to code i mean right now we you know our bathrooms are kind of grandfathered in but um in order to really serve people who traffic this building we need bathrooms on the upper floors. So I know it's not it's not a super sensational, right. um, you know. <laughs> it's not sexy. It's not, not too sexy, but it's very important to have, to, to provide convenience to people mm -hmm. who want to use the library and, and having those um, facilities on upper floors makes a lot of sense. And um, lastly, I would just mention that um, one of the other dreams of the Robbins Library renovations was um, actually connecting this very community room to the exterior with mm. uh, an ADA ramp, um, connecting it with the garden by extending the children's patio all the way mm -hmm. to the end of the building. So these are all high, you know, they're, they're all dreams with a price tag, but I think that those improvements would really be a game changer for the community and for the for use of the library space in all kinds of creative and exciting ways and improving accessibility, which is always going to be a priority for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously you can't help as you move on, but think a, a little bit about legacy. We, you know, we always talk about that kind of thing or think about that kind of thing as you move, as you transition from one thing to another. And, and, and clearly, you've just outlined several areas in which you're going to see the fruits of your labors continue to uh, just kind of bear, you know, come, come, come to fruition in a lot of ways, which I hope you will, you know, be, be looking at from Albany and going, yeah, cool. I... <laughs> no question. I mean, the next director is going to have their own vision and their own ideas and their own um, way of tapping into community um, feelings about the library, tapping into community, the community's sense of what the library should be and, mm -hmm. and could be for the town. Um, so we have to allow for that. At the same time, I think 
you know, it's going to be very exciting to keep tracking the Robbins Library. I mean, I'm not, I'm going to keep my e-newsletter subscription. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I will also continue to keep in touch with so many people right. who work here and who um, also just are in town. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll have all kinds of ways of tracking <laughs> That's, tracking the progress of the library. Yeah, that's great because I, I think you're you're invested in it clearly, obviously. Oh, yeah. But but also I think you you want to see you know what happens from the seeds that you've sown. So that's I, I think that you you should, and I, I hope you'll feel, you'll feel really really good about it. Oh, absolutely. The library is a special place. <laughs> um, our it's no no secret that time is flying here as we mm -hmm. talk. Um, but let me ask you just to briefly talk about like the pandemic and how the library pivoted in so many ways to continue to provide um, the best kind of service to a, to a community that absolutely has the library at its center. Yeah, so one of the toughest things about shutting down the library at the beginning of the, the pandemic was cutting off access to all of our physical collections. So, you know, while we immediately invested and promoted our digital resources, which are prodigious. <laughs> um, and people took advantage of those digital resources and we were able to offer sing-alongs and story times online um, through various platforms. And that was all well received, but there came a time when you know it became clear we needed to find a way to get materials back into the hands of patrons. They are asking for it, we, we want to do it, we have to find a way. And so through the support of the Minuteman Library Network, which I can't overstate the value of their support to all of their member libraries mm -hmm. during COVID, um, but we developed contactless pickup. There was an app that people could use to arrange a time to pick up reserved materials. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the first baby step toward getting physical materials back into the hands of patrons. Um, then we were able to open up our lobby a little bit for drop-in pickup. Um, which, which was also the way that we started delivering grab bags to the community. And grab bags were these uh, custom collections of, of materials that we would check out to patrons who wanted, you know, books for their toddler on trains or what have you. There was an online forum where pe people could easily request that material. Those were incredibly popular. Oh, so yes. drop-in pickup became a really important service for that delivery and for, um, for just regular hold materials. And then eventually, <laughs> um, as public health conditions improved, we were able to open up um, appointment browsing, which were you know 15 minute increments that you I, could book. <laughs> and I did, and I did. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I, I mean, there were all kinds of suggestions that came from the community about ways that we could you know improve upon these these practices, and and, and it was it was so wonderful to hear from people at the same time. Um, so many libraries, ourselves included, were limited by the physical structure of mm -hmm, the building. Mm -hmm. And there were libraries, for example, that had an, uh, you know, an, a door that you could enter through and a door you could easily exit through. With this building configuration, we didn't have um, the setup that would really easily permit that. And so a lot of our systems were developed within the confines of this, this right, building. So. Right. But the greeter, I mean, the, um, the drop-in, the appointment browsing, the drop-in pickup, all of that went um, really well, as well as it could possibly have gone. And we were just so happy on <laughs> the day when we could do away with appointment browsing and open up the floors again. Um, in fact, there's a great picture, a jump shot that I, <laughs> I did in front of the library steps that the assistant director captured. <laughs> that was that celebrated that moment. I think I it was bet. like June twenty first of twenty twenty one or something. Um, anyway, uh, it was such a joy to yeah. like reopen the libraries for people um, when when we were able to. And I'm happy to say that that in our what I'm what we're calling our rebound year of of this fiscal year, um, we're seeing record circulation. Mm -hmm like of all time. Mm -hmm. And it's so exciting because yeah. like- And you actually saw record circulation even with all of the, I mean, not record circulation, I mean, there was there was healthy circulation. Um, yeah, it, it was like healthy. The, the, the grab certainly... bags were crazy because yeah. I do remember looking into the reading room, you know, when I would come in when it was just very restricted to the lobby, you look in the reading room and it's 
table after table after table <laughs> just full of bags that people were you know ready yeah. to come in and grab yeah and we've continued that service so people are still requesting grab bags we're still providing them but yeah it um our circulation definitely took a hit in 2020 mm. 2021 but um, I think with the rediscovery, I mean, a lot of people rediscovered library services or discovered different library services mm -hmm. that they didn't know about. Um, one of the most popular digital resources that we offer is the magazines through available through Overdrive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that you can get full access, total, like complete content, including all the ads and all of the articles and pictures for all of these um, magazines that are that carry very pricey subscriptions outside mm -hmm. of you know mm -hmm. the library. So. Um, it's really exciting to see that kind of discovery going on and to be able to, you know, enhance it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, libraries are, as I've told you many times, my choice of best public institution, you know, in, in history. <laughs> um, but uh, so, you know, th that being said, this, the, the way in which you continue to just listen to the community, respond, and and then provide um, the the opportunity for people to make the very most of their local library here. It's 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 been impressive. It's and boy, are we grateful. Oh, well. um, so Glad to really hear it. really appreciate it. We have seconds left, but let me ask you: um, You're leaving, obviously. I'm sure you you loved your job here. I'm sure it was you know fulfilling in any number of ways as you've already described. So what's, what's drawing you away? <laughs> well, in short, my family. So mm. I, my sister, her family, my parents, they all relocated to Albany, New York within the last five years, which no one expected necessarily, but that is the situation. And I have a, an adorable three-year-old nephew. I have another nephew on the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I really look forward to being more of a part of their lives. And so when, um, you know, I, I, learned of the um, executive director position at Albany Public Library um, back in the spring, and it seemed like pretty much a no-brainer that I, I should throw mm -hmm. my hat in. I had no idea what my prospects would be like, um, but I liked the look of the library. I liked um, what I was seeing online, started following them on social media. I had been receiving their newsletter ever since my sister moved there in 2017. So um, <laughs> I was an admirer of the Albany Public Library. And when the position came available, I was just like, okay, I've got to, I've got to see about this. And um, pleasantly surprised when I got that offer. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the new challenge, but I am really going to miss Arlington. It has been a wonderful place to work. If not for this opportunity and my family situation, I would not be going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I would be here for probably another <laughs> 20 years. I don't know. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really going to miss Arlington. I got to say, you know, you're no politician because I believe you when you say that it's all about spending more time with your family. And I sure as hell wouldn't if it was some, you know, somebody who I, who I was skeptical about. But um, that's a super compelling reason. And, and I'm glad there is one to t for taking you away from us because uh, it has been, as I said, a, a really successful uh, you know, eight to 10 years of your tenure here, or seven to 10 years, you know, d depending on whether you're talking about assistant or, or director. But it's been really good for us. Well, and thank you for saying that. I also need to say that it was great when I arrived here and that, you know, <laughs> a lot of a lot of the job of a good library director is keeping the good things going mm -hmm. and developing new things. So I, I'm just... Well, I'm, the next library director better go ahead and follow subscribe to that same <laughs> idea. <laughs> and I imagine they will. Um, anyway, Andrea, thank you. I, you know, I get the privilege of, of being a, a voice in the community that represents some other people as well, I hope, in saying, you know, really great work, um, good luck. Um, we'll miss you for sure. And, Thank you. Um, you know, but we obviously wish you the best. Thank you, James. It's been a pleasure. Um, and with that, uh, we will wrap up this episode of Talk of the Town. I have been speaking to Andrea Nikolai, the director of our libraries, for a short while more, and we're going to savor it. Um, with our appreciation for Andrea and for, to you as well for being here, I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town, and we will see you next time.